Life, Death and Neighbours. I want to express the warmest of thanks to the World Community for Christian Meditation for their invitation to be here, because an invitation to address a group like this is always an open door into discovery for oneself. Many years I've lived as an ascetic and everybody praises me, but though I'm an old man, I still have a lot of trouble with sexual fantasy. A couple of questions just wanting clarification on how can we be more emotionally intelligent? <laughs> I think we all feel we want to be, but uh, can you give us a lesson? <laughs> Oh, you know, deep breathing and that sort of thing. <laughs> um, oh, well, this, this could take a long time to talk about, and I, I don't want to claim to be any sort of an expert, but what I'm, um, what I'm probing for, I think, is a willingness to stop and look at how we're feeling. There's a big difference between lashing out and saying, ah, I'm angry. And that's a very small thing, but it's the beginning of understanding that my immediate upsurge of feeling is not, as I said, the be-all and end-all. I'm angry. I'm impatient. I'm lustful. I'm greedy. Okay, stop and look. As it were, put it on the table in front of you and say, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. That's what we have language for. It's to put things where we can see them, and where others can as well. Because the next step may be to say to somebody else, actually, I'm angry. Um, can we talk about this? Rather than just, as I say, lashing out and assuming my anger gives me the right to do what I choose. And looking back on it, I can say, oh, well, a red mist came over my eyes. So that's a beginning of emotional intelligence, and it means... I think a willingness to take time between the first sensing of an emotion and what we do about it. And that requires a discipline of some inner stillness, the willingness to give yourself that, that space to look. And it's rather like um, what, what one of the 4th century monastic writers says about temptation. He says, of course, the first thing you've got to do is register that this is the feeling that's there. Don't lie about it, don't evade it, don't deny it, it's there. But the crucial question is, are you then going to indulge it? Are you going to invite it in, explore it, let it sort of leak all over the place? Or are you going to look at it, pray with it, work with it? And that's, that's a start. Good evening, Rowan. It's the 11th of July, 2016, and it's about a quarter past midnight. And obviously, I'm making you my usual video to reassure you I haven't been seducing any priests over the weekend, not even my beloved, because I'm saving myself. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway I thought we could continue our chat this evening this is the last video I'm going to make about the Desert Fathers these videos uh, that were uploaded onto YouTube around the 20th of August 2015 which was about six weeks after I'd been thrown out of my house on the 9th of July 2015. Oh, yes, uh, so I hope you've been having a good weekend celebrating that and celebrating um, how it got you the outcome that you wanted. Oh, hang on, it didn't get you the outcome that you wanted, did it? So have you reflected over that and considered um, changing the way you approach things in the future since your bullying, abusive, harassing, sadistic, psychopathic behaviour hasn't got you what you wanted. Um, because I'm standing up to you in the way that your mother should have stood up to you instead of indulging your every whim. Um, so, 
you think about that it's a bit late in your life to be thinking about it now you really should have been coming to terms with these things when you were about two years old um but better late than never um so i hope you've had a good weekend celebrating all the success uh, that you achieved for yourself by having me thrown out of my house last year anyway so i'm going to continue and talk this is the final time i'm talking about these videos the desert fathers but don't worry there's plenty more shit that you've already talked i've got a collection of tweets about you over the last few weeks um, and there's also a video recently been uploaded onto youtube where you're talking about the holy fool in russian literature <laughs> And Russian's another language that you pretend that you speak, uh, which you claim to have learned uh, by reading War and Peace in Russian with a Russian di dictionary. <laughs> but funnily enough, you know, you did get an award for something to do with making Russian culture and lit literature more well known in Britain. And you got this um, award from the Russian embassy a couple of years ago. Um, and there is actually a video on YouTube of this award ceremony of you at the Russian embassy. And you make a little speech to say thank you for this award. And there you are, surrounded by Russian people in the Russian embassy. And you don't even say a single word in Russian. Not even hello or thank you or anything like that not a single word in russian it's quite bizarre um, considering you're supposed to speak the language anyway so i'm talking i can't remember the title of this video i think it's life death and neighbors there's two videos with the title neighbor in it and i think this one is life death and neighbors um so you say an awful lot of the same old crap. I haven't gone over all of it because you're talking about not judging people again, over and over and over again. This comes up in these videos. You'd think the Desert Fathers never said anything else. Um, anyway, so you say, gaining the neighbour or the brother or sister seems very clearly to mean winning them for God. In a sense, you might say, converting them okay then rowan uh, well i have told you how to inherit eternal life you need to turn to christ and repent of your sins and if you don't want to follow that advice there isn't really a lot i can do about it is there i mean you can take a horse to water but you can't make it drink uh, so and jesus did say to go out and proclaim the gospel but if people didn't uh, welcome you and I've already quoted this um, several quotations from the Gospels a couple of weeks ago where you to go out of the town where you weren't welcomed and shake the dust off your feet um, so I'm telling you once again even though I've told you about 50 times already if you want to inherit eternal life you need to turn to Christ and repent of your sins now the rest of that is up to you you can either take that advice or not take it but if you decide not to take it it's not my problem I don't have to do anything else I've told you that's it that's all you have to do um, if you don't want to do it too bad um, so anyway you go on to say you're talking about John the Dwarf again who you know I'm going to immediately think of St John of the Cross because he was a very short person um, even though you're talking about a different person so you say here's a saying from abba john the dwarf you don't build a house by beginning with the roof and working down so you're talking about houses here uh, it's quite important that i think about houses and space and the music of the spheres in these lectures isn't it and not judging people Here's the same from Abba John the Dwarf. You don't build a house by beginning with the roof and working down. You begin with the foundation. They said, what does that mean? He said, the foundation is our neighbour whom we must win. That is the place to begin. Every commandment of Christ depends on this one. 
Um, well, Christ doesn't actually say to win our neighbour, does he? He says to love our neighbour as ourselves, uh, which means that we should love ourselves as well in a, in a reasonable way. I mean, not in a narcissistic way like you do, but you can't love your neighbour as yourself if you hate yourself, can you? Um, so, um, Christ doesn't tell us to win the neighbour. Um, he tells us to proclaim the gospel to all nations and that means telling them what it is and I've told you about 50 times already. Forget about everything else because you're not grown up enough. So then you say to win, to gain the neighbour is to put them in touch with God. Well I've already explained how you can achieve that Rowan uh, so all you have to do is act on my advice. And don't bother trying to manipulate me because I know that everything you say is total shit. So you're wasting your time. It's that reality of putting someone in touch with God. That, I want to suggest, is fundamental for understanding the spirituality of the desert. And the failure to put someone in touch with God to create an obstacle in another's path is a kind of rebellion against Christ. Uh, so, well, you've done nothing but place obstacles in my path, have you? Um, you've um, used mind control techniques on me, incited other people to do that as well, hounded me around the country everywhere and around foreign countries and to my secular employer, members of my family, um, childhood friends, interfered in places where I will live in, interfered in other Christian denominations and everywhere you could think of to go you went to cause me as many problems and put me as many put as many obstacles in my path as you possibly could um, and you wanted to um, trigger despair in me and to destroy me ruin me destroy my faith um, th I was repeatedly programmed in the Church of England to believe that it was God doing all these things to me. I knew perfectly well that it wasn't because people kept programming me saying things like, uh, you know, I should be angry with God because all these bad things had happened to me. And they looked, you used to look a bit dumbfounded uh, when I said things like, well, it's not God who's done them to me. It's the Church of England. They associate themselves with God, you see. You think... These people think they're the voice of God, uh, even though they contradict um, everything that um, Christian faith teaches in the things that they're saying in their behaviour. Um, so it's kind of like being a cult leader, if you're doing that, really, if you're just making up your own religion and whatever um, you want. You say that it's God who's saying it. God's doing this to you. It's not me. I'm not responsible God's doing it. Anyway, I'm going to make another comment in a minute. I'm not going to go on too long tonight. Gaining the neighbour, or the brother or sister, in the language that St Anthony uses, seems very clearly to mean winning them for God. In a sense, you might say converting them. Here's a saying from Abba John the Dwarf. You don't build a house by beginning with the roof and working down. You begin with the foundation. They said, what does that mean? He said, the foundation is our neighbour, whom we must win. That is the place to begin. Every commandment of Christ depends on this one. To win, to gain the neighbour, is to put them in touch with God. Is that reality of putting someone else in touch with God? That, I want to suggest, is fundamental for a great deal of understanding the spirituality of the desert. And the failure to put someone in touch with God, to create an obstacle in another's path, is a kind of rebellion against Christ. So you go on to say, how is sin to be dealt with? Temptation is always to say, I know how to deal with that in you. The Desert Fathers are consistently saying, you deal with it first and foremost by standing with the sinner. Whatever is the matter, you are to be there alongside them, first, last and always. So, 
Well, as I've said before, this is a group of monks that we were talking about. We're not talking about psychopaths. We're not talking about sexual predators. And we're not talking about Illuminati shills. Uh, so they're not talking about people like you. And they're not talking about that disgusting pervert, David Pete, um, who you were puppeteering anyway. So they're not talking about people like you, as I've said before. Um, and I'm going to say a bit more about that in a minute. Um, but I just want to comment again on this statement, first, last and always. Whatever is the matter, you are to be there alongside them, first, last and always. This is the sinner. Uh, so you're talking in other videos about the space and about the music of the spheres and about me roaming round from one old man to another and this kind of thing, because this is why I say you're having sexual fantasies about me, uh, you see, because um, you say I'm roaming around from one old man to another, uh, the old man who is looking after me, uh, which is a, a euphemism for having sex uh, with a woman, looking after her, and old man is a euphemism for the penis. And uh, you, there's lots of occasions when you've said these things over the years, things like this, and this is what gives me the impression you're having sexual fantasies about me because the simple fact is I'm not going around from one old man to the other and you know that perfectly well by now you know that these are your fantasies you're fantasizing about it and you don't know the difference between fantasy and reality so you're trying to force me to act out your fantasies instead of making your thoughts and your thought processes coincide with reality you try to manipulate reality so that it fits in with your fantasies about how you want it to be um so so you say um you deal with it first and foremost by standing with the sinner whatever is the matter you are to be there alongside them first last and always now i've mentioned this statement first last and always before uh, because this isn't the only time that you used it and um you're referring to a song by the sisters of mercy and you know i'm familiar uh, with this band and you also used this expression in an article you wrote about brother roger of teza around the same time this was also around i think it was about september um that you wrote this article um so first last and always is a song by the sisters of mercy and i have made a video about this before uh, because you'd used it before um and so the the relevant lyrics are first and last and always till the end of time first and last and always mine uh, so that's what you're telling me by using these lyrics that you quoted twice um, around the same period of time and I've been researching you for years and you've not used them before and you've not really used them since not since I commented on this before but you're using them twice in the same period of time and it's a reference to a Sisters of Mercy song uh, so I've told you before I'm not yours um, I've never been yours it's all in your head it's a fantasy I do not belong to you. I've never belonged to you. I've never been anything to you. You've never been anything to me. These are your fantasies and you're trying to force me to act them out, to force me to be in relationship with you and I won't have anything to do with you. You can say what you like. You can do what you like. I couldn't give a shit. I will not have anything to do with satanic filth like you. And that's the end of the story. So just forget about all the bullshit. It'll get you nowhere. I'm not your mother. You're not going to manipulate me. I will never give you what you want. Never. Forget it. So you then go on to say, A brother questioned Abba Payman and said, if I see my brother committing a sin, should I conceal it? The old man said, at the moment when we hide our brother's fault, God hides our own. 
at the moment when we reveal our brother's fault, God reveals our own. Uh, well, that's fine by me, Rowan. I'm not bothered. <laughs> I'm not bothered. And like I've said about 50 times now, <laughs> they were monks. They weren't Illuminati shells. They weren't psychopaths and sexual predators. If you'd have been there, they'd have thrown you out within a month finding out what you've been up to, playing everybody off against each other, playing spiteful games and expecting all the other monks to be deferential to you um, because you think you're above everyone else because of your narcissistic delusions and the reality is that you're an inadequate little man. So you then say, some old men came to see Abba Peeman and said to him, we see some of the brothers falling asleep during the divine office. Should we wake them up? He said, as far as I am concerned, when I see a brother who is falling asleep during the divine office, I put his head on my knees and let him rest. Um, so, well, the monastic offices happened at various times during the day. And um, certainly at the time, the monks used to get up in the night to pray as well. And some monasteries, they still do that today, although it's kind of... Um, gone by the wayside in a lot of them so um this is the kind of fault that the the desert fathers were talking about falling asleep in the divine office because you were tired they weren't talking about sexual predators trying to force themselves on people who didn't want them and they weren't talking about people um, providing propaganda um, for a totalitarian one world government that wants to destroy every civilization. They weren't talking about people like you. They weren't talking about covering those kinds of faults. They were talking about things like falling asleep in the divine office. So you've shot yourself in another foot that you haven't got left to shoot yourself in now. Uh, by giving an example of the kind of fault they were talking about, not perverted old bastards trying to ruin the lives of young women who don't want sex with them. Uh, so they weren't talking about you. So don't bother coming out with this shit and thinking you're going to manipulate me with it because you're not. Anyway... Oh, yes. Well, I won't be seducing any priests this week either, uh, but I am going to come back and mention my beloved again in a minute. How is sin to be dealt with? Temptation is always to say, I know how to deal with that in you. Not so sure about myself, but I know how to deal with it in you. The Desert Fathers are consistently saying, you deal with it first and foremost. Remember, Abba John the Dwarf, don't start from the roof. You deal with it first and foremost by standing with the sinner. Whatever is the matter, you are to be there alongside them, first, last, and always. And again, a few examples. A brother questioned Abba Piman, saying, If I see my brother committing a sin, should I conceal it? The old man said, At the moment when we hide our brother's fault, God hides our own. At the moment when we reveal our brother's fault, God reveals our own. Some old men came to see Abba Piman and said to him, We see some of the brothers falling asleep during the divine office. Should we wake them up? He said, As far as I'm concerned, when I see a brother who is falling asleep during the divine office, I put his head on my knees and let him rest. <laughs> no, not indifference, but where do we start? With the identification. Solidarity. That is what heals. So I just want to mention that I've seen my beloved over the weekend again and he's just absolutely gorgeous. I can't stop thinking about him. I dream about him every night, but I really, really can't tell you about that because it's far too personal. He's just so handsome and so sexy. <laughs> he's just the perfect man for me. I can't believe I finally met him. And those feet, wow. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, I'm not going to say any more tonight because I'm a bit tired. But don't worry, there's plenty more shit that you've talked about uh, for me to be getting on with in the future. <laughs> so I'll leave it there for now. Uh, but don't forget, I will be turning up to arrest you. Um, so be alert, won't you? I'm, I hope you've been practising the Yorkshire puddings over the weekend. Oh, I had another idea as well. Like, I thought, yeah, well, you know when a woman's pregnant and she's about to give birth and she has to pack a bag uh, to be ready to go to the hospital? <laughs> well, I just wondered if you did that when you're ready to go to prison, that's all. I wondered if it was like the same thing. <laughs> now... What I want to know is, do you want to pack your own picture frame or do you want me to have the picture framed for you? If you just let me know, I'm quite happy to have it framed for you because I'm so grateful that you've enabled me to find uh, this absolutely wonderful man who, um, it's all thanks to you that I've found him. Uh, so I'm so grateful that I'll have the photo of us together all loved up. Uh, gazing adoringly at each other. I'll have the photo professionally taken and I'll have it framed as well um, to post it to you so you can show it to your cellmate, uh, Tony Blair or whoever it is. Um, and it'll be a bit of an icebreaker for you, won't it, when you first get there. Uh, you can, can show him this picture and explain how it was you that brought us together. Um, so if you want to take your own frame, that's fine. Um, otherwise, I'll have it framed for you. Uh, but if you've got a particular preference um, for the type of frame that you'd like, then just let me know. And solid gold is fine because I'm going to be a bajillionaire by the time I've finished sewing you um, and a bunch of psychiatrists. <laughs> so if you'd like a solid gold picture frame, let me know. So I'll leave it there for now. But don't forget, be alert. Hasta la próxima.